What's up everybody? Well, I got another video for you guys on the ASUS G15 Advantage and today I am hoping I am finally gonna get my temps under control and finally be winded a, and be handed a W. So I went out and purchased some Thermal Grizzly Extreme here. Comes in a box. I was not expecting it to come in this big old box here, but there you go. I don't wanna get too close or it'll get out of focus, but there you guys go. So why don't we go ahead and unbox this? Why the hell not? It seems a little silly to unbox Thermal Compound, but why not? Man, that knife sharp barely had to put any pressure at all. Actually, why don't I just show you the dang knife? Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Anyway, though, that's not what this is about. Let's go see what we got in our package here. Alrighty. So what do we got? We've got some random stuff. Certificate of origin. Okay. Telling you how to apply it. And all right. Comes with three different trowels. So that's cool. So even if you break one, lose one, and then there you go. This right here was $83 for this tiny little thing, but it seems small, but this is an enormous amount of thermal compound. It'll take me forever to use it. Heck, it might even go out of shelf life before I ever use it all, but I still figured I'm gonna need more than two, and then two of those are $14 a piece, so why not just go with the $82 one? Screw it. I mess with computers so much. But anyway, why don't we now get the laptop shut down and taken apart? I'm not gonna bother sitting here unscrewing all the screws and everything again. We're just gonna get right in there, take that blasted vapor chamber off, and as soon as we do that, we'll turn the camera back on. All right, guys. I already did all the crazy parts like taking it apart and whatnot and putting the new screws in. Now this time I decided to combine two washers with the spring. This time instead of three. Figured maybe three wasn't actually making as much contact as I thought. You know, the spring might do better because the spring fills in that gap and has tension. Whole point it's in there. So, and then we also put all the goop on, took all of the thermal pads off and replaced it with goop. Hell, you can even see some of the goop through that. So I guess some of that stuff didn't need the goop. Whatever. It's non-conductive. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. So now why don't we go ahead and get this thing put back together so we can start it up. Hopefully it still starts, but I didn't see any sparks or whatnot. I never do unhook my battery. I had one bad experience when I was younger where I wasn't careful and I broke the dang connector off. And then at that time it wasn't easy to get a battery anymore. So it was just a bad time. So I don't even bother with it. As long as you're not messing around with metal or whatnot, you, it, you shouldn't have a problem. Like the only thing I could see being a problem is if you, like let's say this thing was off and you took like these metal tweezers and started trying to maybe clean out some of the goop, then it might bridge two connections and spark. So that's exactly why I, instead I have this guy. I took a little wooden toothpick. That ain't gonna do nothing. You just have to be careful not to push so hard that you break off any of the little things. There's a bunch of delicate little stuff, but I was good and I got rid of all of the old putty, all of the thermal pads and everything. So it should have optimum uh, capabilities here. And I made sure I put thermal compound on every single one of these. So we should be really fucking good and good to go. So I'm gonna put the casing back on and then we will go ahead and see how it does. Hopefully we find Finally got good temps. Well, all right, real quick before I put it back together, since I don't show this part very often, I figured I would show you guys how to reinstall these little guys. So all you're gonna wanna do is take your tweezers and you can grab it like that to get it started. And then just make sure I'm going to, this time I'm gonna make sure I don't get my fingers in the way on that one. Make sure it's held completely straight. Make sure it's pushed in there. Drop that little guy down, give it a little tug. He doesn't come back out, so he's good. So now we can do the same thing with this guy right here. All right, let's try to grab him like this. This will work better. Here we go. Come on. I was never the best with these finite movements, but here we go. And again, give it a little teeny tiny tug. Not too hard. You don't want to break it, but just to make sure it actually is in there all the way. Otherwise, you'll put this thing all the way back together <laughs> and then make sure, and it won't work. You won't have any RGB. So just make sure that none of the wires are going to get into the fans. Put your casing back on like that. Crack it all on and then put your screws back in and you're good to go. So I'm going to go do that and then we'll turn the computer on and see if I finally conquered the temps or not. Well, here we go, guys. We're about ready to turn it on. So as usual, let's take our arbitrary hit here. Have some nice Gorilla Glue. So let's hit it and let's turn this on. Well, that's a good sign. And all right, we're already in Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in and then we'll crank all the power limits to the max, run a Cinebench and run a game real quick and see how it does. Hopefully it does well. If not, oh well. I can't really think of anything else to try other than keeping the, what do you call it? Power limited a little bit. So let's go see how it does. Well, all right. Let's start some of our tests here, but before we do, I just want to show you we maxed out all this what stuff and whatnot. So now all we've got to do here is go and do a little, I believe, let's do R23 first. Yes, let's do that. So we don't need that open anymore. That's been known to fuck with scores from what I've been told. So we'll close that. We'll open up some Cinebench. And of course, we're not going to run 
OBS while we're doing it. Let's also get this going, too. we got to get some hardware info, or we're not going to know what our temps were. Making the whole thing pretty irrelevant. Well, other than still gore. You could have still seen my score. But all right. We're going to run multi and single, so... I'm going to go run that, but first I'll turn off OBS. Well, here's what we got for score. So we didn't get quite 13,000 anymore, but we still got 12,000. And uh, the same single core as before. So we didn't really gain nor lose anything here, though we did get a little bit worse multi-core, but sometimes that happens to me. Anyway, though, let's move on to the next test, shall we? Well, here's Fire Strike. We got 27,645. There's 34,500 for the graphics, 24,105 for physics, and 12,148. So, not bad. And this is with no external monitor, by the way. This is just on the laptop itself. So now let's scroll down and see what we got up to. Nope, we got up to 96 still. Figured if we did during the Cinebench, why wouldn't we get up to during this, too? All right, though, let's go see what we got on the other guy here. Okay, well, that's not bad. We only got up to 83. So that's not bad, but that is not, Fire Strike's not that hard to run, so why don't we now go ahead and move on to Time Spot? Well, now, here's our Time Spot score. We got 11,223, but this is just on the laptop screen itself. We're not on external. If I went and did an external monitor, we'd probably be at average or slightly above. So not bad. Graphic score of 11,561 and CPU score of 9,631. Now let's go check our temps. They're probably more of the same, 96. You have 96.8 on the CPU. That's to be expected. All right, here we go. And 87 and all that stuff again. So about the same as it was before. I mean, the memory might be slightly cooler than it was before. But besides that, everything seems about the same as it was. So it doesn't seem like getting rid of those thermal pads really helped. Anyway, though, still, let's go run a little bit more tests, shall we? Guys, let's get ourselves some gameplay here. I just cranked everything in the game to maximum. And an FSR on uh, quality. Figure we'll get maximum heat that way, so let's just drive around for a little bit here. See if we get any crashes, stutters, super overheating, or what. Obviously the CPU is doing its normal 9596, so that's nothing to be surprised about. After seeing what it did in the benchmarks, I figured it was gonna act like this in-game. And the GPU seems to be about the same as well. 85, 86 it seems to be. Paying too much attention to the damn temps and that and the driving. Because it used to get up to like 85, 86, and then after I did my nonsense before it was getting up to, what was it, getting up to like 88, 89. Hot spots being about the same too, 100, 101. Taking a shortcut. <laughs> Oh crap, that's a house. Oh, he took off their front porch and almost murdered their dog, but we're all good. Back on the road, even though in real life this car would be completely destroyed in a million pieces in a fireball. But since it's just a game, who cares? Alright, nope, it still gets up to 87 sometimes, so we're right where we were before. So unfortunately, if you want to run everything completely unrestricted, these are just the temps you're going to get as far as my laptop goes. Now every silicon is different, so just because mine gets this hot doesn't mean everyone's will, but I don't think it's worth ripping your laptop open, I really don't. Because now I've pretty much got optimum pressure, optimum thermal compound all over it, and we're still not able to get to where we were before. I swear it never used to get up to 87. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it always did. But it used to be at 86 more often than not. 85, 86. But at least it's not dropping the box. We're staying around 2300 megahertz. 
So we're probably getting better frames now than we were even when we were living ourselves. So I'm just gonna let the thing be at 96 degrees all the time. And I'm just gonna go do skis uh, tinkering so I can get more performance. Cause yeah, as long as it doesn't die because the temps and it's gone a year with these temps so far, I'm happy with them. I don't care. I feel like a defeated man, unfortunately. But no crazy stutters, no no dropping down to 20, having that stupid HTC module or whatever it was throttle, right? And it would have already done that by now. Or even in the city, which is harder to run than where I was previously. I figured we'd go right into the downtown of the damn city. But alright though, I think that's more than enough gameplay. So why don't we now go wrap this video on up? Well, we just got done with some Forza Horizon. So we got to 96.4 on the CPU. So about the same as it was before. We weren't getting any crazy stuttering or anything, so that's all that's at least good. And then we got up to about the same as we were before on the GPU 2, 88 and all that stuff, so whatever. Well, all right, guys, that's the end of our little adventure here. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can do, at least with my laptop, to max the thing out and get the temps that I had stocked. So if I were people, I would just leave it alone. Just underclock or leave it at 96. Mine's survived an entire year and a lot of gameplay, a lot more than most people probably got put this thing through, editing videos, all sorts of stuff. And it still has never crashed or done anything bad. I just figured, let's break it open and see if we can improve the temps. Because the one guy on Reddit did. And unfortunately, I think his either is better silicon or somehow he's fibbing and that's some fabricated numbers one of the two not trying to call the guy a liar but it's either he's lying or his CPU is just better than mine or whatever he used for mounting is just way better than mine but I'm using the springs and everything and two washers on each one so that thing should be mounted with as much pressure as it can handle but anyway though I still enjoyed making this video for you guys I feel a little defeated but from now on I'm just gonna let it run unrestricted 96 degrees let it do its own thing as long as it doesn't blow up and even if it does we'll get a new laptop for the channel not that this one's old or anything but I don't think that's gonna happen I'm just saying worst case scenario we'll get another interesting laptop for the channel but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed. Sure enjoyed making this trilogy. I'm glad it's finally over. I will not be opening up that thing no more. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next one, peace out, guys.